the seven churches of Asia will not survive unless they listen to the Spirit. It says in Revelation 2.7, To him who conquers, I will grant to eat from the tree of life. The Holy Spirit intercedes as a divine intercession in the interest of those who have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. That's found in Romans 8, 26. What a powerful scripture that is. Even when we don't even know how to pray, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us and helps us to pray to our Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ. That's a tremendous scripture. The Holy Spirit testifies regarding Jesus and found in John 15, 26. The Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father will bear witness to me. So we have it right there that he testifies regarding Jesus and his interest and love for us. The Holy Spirit leads us as his servants to service. The Holy Spirit will help you in your spiritual gift. If you're a Christian, every one of you here have at least one spiritual gift. Now I look around the room and some of you have been given many, many gifts. And we're supposed to use those gifts uh, to just uh, hit for his service. And uh, if he gives us a gift, the worst thing that we can do is to bury our gifts. And we know what happened to the person that buried his gift and how the one that was blessed, you know, that had uh, more talents. I mean, they were really blessed. But the one that just had one went and buried his talent, and it talks about weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Not a good experience for those who bury those talents. The Holy Spirit gives us gifts. He expects them, us to use them. The Spirit said to Philip, go up and join the chariot. And uh, this is a classic example of using our spiritual gifts. Listening to the Holy Spirit. Well, the, the uh, Philip went to that chariot, and uh, an Ethiopian eunuch <coughs> was in that particular chariot. And uh, the command was from the Lord was that he can be led to Christ. Well, indeed, he was led to Christ because he was reading from the book of Isaiah. And after reading from the book of Isaiah, this is what he said. He was so convicted. He said, well, <coughs> here is water. What does it hinder me to be baptized? And uh, so... He was convicted, and it was all started from Philip, who was given a, a command from the Holy Spirit to lead the Ethiopian eunuch to Christ. And uh, many times you hear that still, small voice saying to you, why don't you go and talk to that person about the Lord, about coming to church? And uh, most people come to church because people ask them. Now, this is one of the reasons I uh, have KK. That's what I'm going to say from now on. I'm not going to say her name anymore. But already some people are going to come because she's going to be singing here. And, uh, and one person is Zoe, and she thinks a lot of KK. And KK has taken an interest in here and her, and so she'll be here next week. I'm sure Zoe will be. I'll be very disappointed. Now, let's serve her. They go someplace, but I think she'll be here, and it'll be because of KK's has taken an interest in Zoe. Second Peter 3, 21 and 20 and 21, it amazes me the number of people who do not feel baptism is necessary. And let me let me read to you that scripture that in 2 Peter uh, 3, uh, 20. And it says, now I, I wore uh, this uh, tie for a reason because of this scripture today about Noah's Ark. To those who were disobedient long ago, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built, only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. 
And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you. Also, not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a clear conscience toward God. So that's why it says to repent, be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus, and for the forgiveness of sins. And it talks about the Holy Spirit coming into your life at the point of baptism. Also, the Holy Spirit functions as a guide to understanding divine truth. It says in John 16, 13, when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. Now, we've heard a lot about in the impeachments, and somebody's lying around here. I, I don't know. So one says one thing, and one says another. Sometimes you don't know who to believe. But you don't have to worry about that with the Lord Jesus Christ. He will guide you into all truth. You don't have to worry about who's lying around here. The Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, God the Father, never lies. He points you to the right way because He loves you so very much and He wants all of us to go to heaven. That is, He came to seek and to save all that are lost. That's how much the Holy Spirit loves you and guides you into truth and helps you walk in this life because He loves you so very, very much. The Holy Spirit has made you guardians to feed the Church of God. The Church of God he obtained with his own blood. Acts 20, 28. The pastor needs more than the majority vote to be an effective minister. The pastor needs to make sure that he is led by the Holy Spirit. And um, in other words, I'm useless without the help of the Holy Spirit. And I know many people feel that a pastor is a very easy job. And, you know, you have to work on a Sunday, you know, and so that's, that's pretty good, you know. And, uh, but let me tell you some incidents in, in which uh, it's not easy for a pastor. It's not easy for a pastor when he directs a wedding and uh, he calls the bride's um, former boyfriend's name instead of the right name in whom she is married. That, that's a tough situation for a minister. Your personal parking spots gets relocated to Denny's restaurant three blocks away. Okay, that's, that's a bad sign for a minister. You forget to turn off your cordless microphone while you're using the restroom. That, that's, a, that's a tough situation. That actually happened in Minerva. We had an elder that had a microphone on, and he went to the bathroom, and the whole congregation flushed him. So that, that, was, that was a tough, tough one. That, that was true. I no doubt about that. I think we all remember that. The church begins uh, exploring the possibility of a trip to Libya one way. Now, that, that's, a, that's, that's a bad sign for a minister. Or the organist is asked to play while you are preaching. Now, you know that that's a tough time as well. Or you preach the same sermon two weeks in a row and nobody notices. Now, that's a bad sign for a minister as well. You get assigned to nursery duty during the morning service. Now, that's, uh, or the church votes to have your day off on Sunday. Okay. That, that's a bad one anyway. I know I, when I was interviewed at uh, Minerva, Ohio, in the interview, they asked me what day I wanted off, and I said, how about Sunday? And I, I was lucky I got the job after I said that. I know that. But you talk about tough experience. Even the great ministers make mistakes. Bob Russell, who was a minister of the church of 20,000 in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, said he almost quit the ministry one time when he forgot to go to a wedding that he was supposed to officiate. He felt so bad that uh, he forgot this that he almost quit. Well, we're so thankful that the Holy Spirit convicted him not to quit because he was probably one of the greatest ministers in our brotherhood, a church of 20,000 people, almost the size of Marshalltown. Well, not quite. I mean, Marshalltown's 28,000. But can you imagine a church of 20,000 and how God used him in a tremendous way? And he had definitely 
the gift of the Holy Spirit as far as ministry is concerned. But the Holy Spirit must guide us all. And you know, if, if you're going through those experiences, and they happen often, maybe the Holy Spirit has left you within the ministry. But uh, we know that definitely uh, leaders, elders, deacons, Sunday school teachers, we need the Holy Spirit. Those who sing for the Lord, the choir, we all need to be inspired by the Holy Spirit. It is a gift from God, singing, preaching, teaching, just bringing people to church. Asking them to church, that's a gift from God, and we must not bury that gift. The Holy Spirit will help you with your spiritual gift that you have. The Holy Spirit is a living gift that can be perceived by virtue of the fact that he can be grieved by improper conduct. Ephesians 4.30 says this, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, and you are sealed on the day of redemption. We need to praise God when the Holy Spirit speaks to us and tells us that you are in the wrong. I know it's not fun to have a guilty conscience, but you can be thankful of one thing when you have a guilty conscience. You can you know that the Holy Spirit is within you. When you need to worry is when you can go and do a terrible sin or any sin, and you don't even are not even bothered by it. That's when you need to worry. But as long as you feel that guilt conscience, when you do wrong and grieve in the Holy Spirit, He'll let you know about it. And you all know what I'm talking about, don't you? You know, we don't like to be feeling guilty, but at the same time, we can praise God that, that we're on His side, and He'll warn us. Don't go that way. And uh, many times, we know that we hear that still, small voice, which we should be so thankful for. Second of all, the Holy Spirit is a divine person. When God bestows the gift of the Holy Spirit within the heart of the child, He's bestowing a living gift who is at the same time a divine person. Galatians 4, 6. And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of His Son in our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. God is a Spirit. It's a very personal Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. God in the Spirit comes to dwell with us in the body of each believer in his living presence. This living gift, gift of the divine presence comes to our life to purify us and produce within us the character and the personality of Jesus Christ. Now that, that is something that he wants us to be like Jesus. That's the goal of the Holy Spirit. Now I know that we all fall short of that, but that's what the Holy Spirit's goal is, that we be like Jesus. And if we're like Jesus, great things are going to happen. And uh, we want great things to happen within our life. We need to listen to the Holy Spirit. And sometimes when somebody tells us something we don't want to hear, remember kids, when, you, when they're you're correcting them, they, you know, they go like, Ugh, you know, they don't want to hear what you, and sometimes we're like that when the Holy Spirit speaks to us. We go, ah, you know, like that. Man. We don't want to hear it. And sometimes we don't even want to read the scriptures because we know that we're going against the Holy Spirit. How much more shall the blood of Christ through the Holy Spirit offer himself without blemish to God purify your conscience from dead works to serve the living Lord? Yes, if we love Christ, we'll want to serve him. We must check our hearts if we're always grumbling about being in the service of the king. Remember the song, I'm so happy in the service of the king? I know a lot, lots of times in ministry I'd like to reinterpret that song, I'm so nervous in the service of the king. And I've been, I've been there too. But, uh, but I know that the Holy Spirit has helped me in practically all situations to overcome nervousness and, and to keep going for the Lord. He will guide you, he will help you. He never lets you down. He loves you so much. The living gift of the Holy Spirit is all powerful. And uh, that is proven in the immaculate conception of Christ. Um, I love the song, Mary, Did You Know? And just yesterday, I picked up a book about uh, the immaculate conception, or, uh, conception of, of the Lord. And uh, Mary, Did You Know? What a beautiful song that is. And they, they even had the... Mark Lowry had his singing in the background of that particular song, and I'm glad I picked that up. I uh, almost got the whole book read about the Virgin Mary, and uh, we must believe 
in the Virgin Mary, and what a miracle that is. But it, he did it at the right time, just like Chris singing that whole soul. He came at the right time to uh, save us from our sins. This is a living gift of the Holy Spirit and knows all things as well as all things of man. The Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what person knows a man's thoughts except the person of the, excuse me, except the Spirit of man which is in Christ Jesus? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. That's kind of scary that the Holy Spirit knows even our thoughts and uh, he knows our actions and he even knows our thoughts. So we must do everything that we can to keep our minds clear and spiritual and loving in the sight of the Lord. An example of how the Holy Spirit works. Billy Graham had a son called Franklin Graham. Franklin Graham rebelled against his father's great ministry and against the father, his father himself. He didn't want anything or any comparisons to his father, Billy Graham. In <coughs> indignation, he expressed it by drinking, carousing, and was even expelled from school. The Holy Spirit got a hold of Franklin Graham, and now uh, Franklin Graham is the chairman of his father's crusade. Of course, we know that Billy Graham passed away a few years ago. And, uh, but what a transformation he made in Franklin Graham. And uh, we even got to hear him. I think he spoke in Des Moines that we heard him. And uh, of course, he looks like Billy as, uh, in his younger years as well. But he's doing a great work. And just to think, he tried to rebel. He tried to get to go against the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit overtook his life and what great works he is doing for the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit with God has given to us a living gift and as is spoken in the scripture. For example, Peter asked Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the proceeds of the land? I think we all remember that story. You have not lied to men, but you have lied to God. And so many times uh, we forget that when we sin, that it's going directly against God and His Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God and can be seen in Paul's statement. And let me read this statement. We all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being changed into His likeness from one degree of the glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Conclusion. The Holy Spirit of God invites each non-believer to put his faith in Jesus and to receive him as Lord and Savior. God uses many avenues to get people to come to him. God uses the Holy Scriptures. You know, we know the Gideons have a tremendous ministry in placing Bibles in motels and uh, everywhere that they possibly can because they realize the word of God does not come up void. He uses the scriptures to change people's lives. He also uses many other ways. He uses family and uh, to as well. He'll use personal friends of yours who are Christians to make sure that you stay on the, on the straight and narrow. We know that uh, the Holy Spirit does so much to bring people to the Lord Jesus Christ because he doesn't want anyone to perish. We may not be discouraged that we do not have the physical presence of Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit, which represents God, which represents Jesus, and of course represents himself, the Holy Spirit. Let us celebrate his presence in the Holy Trinity 20 or seven. He is always with us. The Holy Spirit of God never, and Jesus never, never leaves us because he loves us so very much. Let's pray. Tony Father, I thank you so much for the Holy Spirit that loves us in spite of ourselves. And when we do sin, he's there to remind us that we must get right with him. We are so thankful that we can go to you, Lord, and ask for forgiveness. If we 
And we know that you do forgive us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us, I love this word, all. And uh, we know that he does forgive all and we are so thankful. Bless us now, I pray that if someone does not know you as their Lord and Savior, that the Holy Spirit will be reactivated in their hearts and they will see that they need you. We need you, Lord. We love you. And help us as we walk in our daily walk with you. Lord, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us be standing.